In this practical we're going to carry out a neutralization. You need to check with your teacher that you've got all the safety information and filled out the safety slide on the PowerPoint or written down the safety advice in your practical book. We are going to neutralize 20 mils of hydrochloric acid using sodium hydroxide, both the same strength, 2 moles per litre. First, measure 20 mils of 2 moles per litre hydrochloric acid, ensuring that the meniscus is sitting on the 20 mil mark. And pour this into your beaker. so that we can know when the reaction is over, when the acid is completely neutralized. We add five drops of universal indicator to keep track of the pH. It should be completely neutralized when the pH is seven. We start our neutralization by adding most of the required sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to add 18 mils ensuring that the meniscus sits on the 18 mil line at eye level. Add the sodium hydroxide gradually and note any colour changes that occur. We then add sodium hydroxide gradually, a drop at a time, until we have reached the pH of 7, in which case all the acid will be neutralized and hopefully there will be no extra sodium hydroxide added. Again, noting any color changes that occur along the way, as you may be required to explain what is causing the colors to change. In terms of the acid particle, the hydrogen ion, and the base particle or hydroxide ion. Notice that the changes are occurring now. We have to slow right down as one drop can in fact make quite a difference. And just add another half a drop to that. And there we have our universal indicator color indicating the pH of 7. The acid should all be neutralized and there should be little or no leftover alkali in that reaction mixture. To get our solid sample of the salt that's formed, we'll need to place this into a boiling dish uh, and place it over the heat and boil it for one minute. To get a solid sample of our salt, we place our reaction mixture into an evaporating dish and put it over the heat and boil it for approximately a minute just to reduce the amount of water in there. We then leave it to cool over the next few days and for the um, salt to crystallize. So, light up your Bunsen. Sure you've done a safety check on the hose, the ear hole is closed and you light it in a safe way. If you're using a flame, you have your flame ready before the gas arrives. And then you turn on the gas and a little bit of air in there so that we don't get a smoggy room. And then we heat this to boiling and boil it for one minute or 
possibly a bit more depending on what your teacher says. In the meantime, have yourself a Petri dish label. We're going to put out, transfer our solution into there because over the next few days you may do several of these and we have not got enough evaporating dishes so we're going to let the solution crystallise in a nice clean Petri dish. Make sure it's labelled on the underside. This solution has now been boiling for a minute and a half. I can actually see the volume has gone down a little bit. So I'm going to take it off the heat. And of course, turn off the flame. Don't forget always to turn off the gas tap. Never blow a Bunsen burner flame out because the Bunsen is still running. Right. Allow this to cool and then transfer it to the Petri dish and put it away where your teacher directs. Um, over the next few days you should end up with several of these dishes crystallising um, different salts.